Over time, we humans have developed a whole lot of different relationships with the other animals. One of those relationships is that of prey and predator. We slaughter cattle for food. On the other hand, we feed and care for the same kind of animal, the cow, for the milk she gives us. It's a rather uneasy mixture of killing and caring. And you may not believe this, but something very similar happens in the world of ants. Ants are undoubtedly among the most feared and efficient predators in the animal world. Few other insects can stand against that terrifying armory of stings and mandibles and acid guns and the sheer weight of numbers. Surprisingly enough, when ants go hunting, the kill is rarely eaten by the adult members of the community. Ants simply aren't all that keen on meaty meals. These ants are attending some tiny insects called psyllids that feed on sap. The little shelters the psyllids live under are made out of surplus sugars excreted by the insects, and that's what the ants are feeding on. You see, ants happen to have a rather sweet tooth, or should I say a sweet mandible. They like nectar and honeydew and other syrupy things. So when ants kill other insects, it's not for themselves, but for the grubs or larvae back in the nest. Tropical green weaver ants will attack anything that moves, and succulent caterpillars are high on their hit list. This one will end up as bite-sized chunks on the nursery dinner table. Ant nurseries are always full, and for the workers, feeding the young ones is a never-ending task. So caterpillars of all kinds generally try to avoid any contact with ants and use all kinds of ruses to escape notice. But among one family of butterflies, there are some notable and quite extraordinary exceptions. This beautiful butterfly is an oak blue. It belongs to a family of butterflies generally called blues and justly famed for the astonishing relationship the caterpillars have with certain ant species. In the case of the oak blue, it's with those same tropical weaver ants or green tree ants. It's hard to believe that the ants riding on the back of this caterpillar are the same kind that we saw earlier tearing another caterpillar to pieces. There's no sign at all of aggression or murderous intent, so what makes these ants behave so differently? The answer is a kind of bribery. The caterpillar is making them an offer they simply can't resist. All the caterpillars of this family have tiny glands on their bodies that are attractive to ants. Some of them, including the oak blue, have an extra large gland on the back. It secretes drops of honeydew, a fluid containing sugars and amino acids. There it is again. The ant only has to ask and up comes a good drop. Those two little white structures popping up and down are something of a mystery. Perhaps they signal something important to the ants. Like, come on, let's go. Here's an ant passing on what she's just enjoyed to one of her sisters. Both are capable of drinking from the honeydew fountain, but mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding goes on a lot between ants. It's part of what binds an ant colony together. This is all very well, but what does the caterpillar get out of the arrangement? The answer is security. The mere presence of the ants is a deterrent to the little parasites and predators that plague the life of caterpillars, and very often end it. So wherever the caterpillar goes, its bodyguards go with it, periodically taking their payment in honeydew, just like milking a cow. And by the way, the ants weave shelters for their dairy herds, just as we build cow sheds for ours. What a fascinating parallel to our dealings with our own domestic livestock, killing on the one hand and caring on the other. Well, Camille, I think it's my lunchtime. I'm off to have a milkshake, and I promise I won't have a hamburger. 